My name is Adam Blumenschein. I'm Tim Klatt. We're Strangeland Brewery. And you're watching The Beer Diaries. So we're in a little city called Westlake Hills. We're about five or 10 minutes from downtown Austin on 360 and BK's Road at the northeast corner. We love to say we are the rough and the diamond. Uh, Westlake has not had a brewery and hasn't had an extension of downtown Austin culture brought into Westlake. And we feel like we do that. So we're situated here in the old Pots and Plants nursery, which everyone uh, may not know the name, but they will recognize surely the pink flamingos that he set out here at the corner of Bee Caves and 360. And we're proud here at Strangeland because we actually have one of the original flamingos. We were able to find it when we were doing our renovations on the space. We actually found one and we're not letting go of it. We built our brew system here in Texas uh, with one of our investors that allowed us to tailored to the size we were looking for, to the flexibility of use that we needed. And what was really great is we were able to brew on it before we opened. And it allowed us to get comfortable on the system, develop some batches, see some of the brew house efficiencies even before we had a brew house. And so we were able to start making some really great beer as soon as we opened. So our system is extremely manual. Uh, I like it that way. Um, we've made about 120 batches here. Every batch has been hand raked. So we bought a rake from Home Depot and I use that uh, every time to um, when we dough in or mash in all, all the grain. And I feel like that's the level of scale that I'm comfortable with at this point. I don't want machines to take over. I don't want automation to take over. So everything is done very manually. Uh, when we go to cool down, I sit there and I, I, I finally tune in like the parameters to get us to go from boiling to 75 degrees or 70 degrees, whatever, for the beer to chill down at. And um, I feel like that keeps us very in tune with our product. One of the cool things that we did in the development of Strangeland and the brew system here was we deconstructed every process. So starting from the mill, going all the way down to chilling and uh, getting into the fermenter. And so we built our own mill system. Basically, we're using essentially homebrew mills, uh, but we retrofitted them for the commercial application. And the miracle of everything was that it actually worked. Um, and so we proved that now, you know, 120 times and feel really good about that. We make uh, four flagship beers. We have a Saison, an Alt, our Abbey Ale, and our Porter. We condition our beer naturally, and most breweries uh, and most beers are forced carbonated. That's the yeast is disposed of early on during the fermenting process. When it's finished out, they introduce CO2 on top of it. And that, for my palate, leaves a flavor out of the beer experience. We, we love yeast, I love the taste of yeast, and uh, there's many different yeast uh, flavors that you can bring to the beer. And so we use six different strains a lot of breweries use one or two, we use six, and we leave those yeast strains alive through the entire process of the fermentation primary and even in the secondary. And what that means is when you drink our beer, the tiny little bubbles that are found present, you can find a lot of yeast there uh, that are still alive. It's non-pasteurized, it's never been crashed. It's still aging and maturing and developing because the same beer that turns those sugars into alcohol and CO2 in the big tanks are doing the same activity, but inside the keg, the bottle, or in the can. And we're one of the only breweries in the world doing it in kegs and bottles, and we know of no other in the world doing it in cans. So what you see in, in kind of a modern beer context is lots of hops, loads of hops. Everyone are going over, over the board with hops. At Strangeland, we're, we're trying to take it backwards just a little bit, going back to the roots of brewing, because when people started making beer, they didn't always have hops available, so they used what was available to them. For example, for our anniversary ale, we're brewing a Belgian triple, which has sweet orange peel, coriander, and orange blossom honey. So that's going to have a tremendous like Belgian strong ale with loads of these fascinating orange flavors. It does have some hops in it, kind of counteract on the bitterness, but we like everything to be 
held in balance and held kind of in tension with each other. So no Strangeland beer is ever done where hops are the, the pure focus of it.